we'll get started. Um, this is the four-year-old panel, so we're <laughs> 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 we've been um, involved in OpenStack since the beginning of OpenStack, and it's changed into something we didn't really expect. So we now are um, uh, all repentant OpenStackers, and uh, we will start with a quick introduction of uh, like where where you were four years ago, what you did during those four years, yeah, because you <laughs> 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 that's special for Jay. We'll start with Vish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vish Ashaya. So four years ago, uh, I was uh, in San Francisco when we wrote the first line of code for Nova. Um, before OpenStack was a thing, uh, which is a long story that I won't get into yet, although maybe if things get really boring, we'll get into the, the really old days. Um, and I was the first OpenStack compute technical lead uh, for the first two years, and I'm currently on the board of directors and the technical committee, um, so I'm still very involved, although I do a lot less coding now. Yeah, uh, four years ago, Gah, uh, I, I don't really know. Um, four years ago, I, oh, sorry, uh, I'm Monty Taylor. Uh, four years ago, I was uh, actually a core developer on Drizzle um, uh, with our, our good friend, uh, uh, well, actually, like five years ago, I was, a, I was a core developer on Drizzle with Jay Pipes, uh, working at, at Rackspace um, and uh, uh, around the time that we started all this stuff. Um, I, uh, I started the, the infra program, was the original in for PTL, uh, I, if, if you look at my Stackalytics numbers, you'll realize that, like Vish, I probably do uh, less actual real technical things. Um, or not, yeah, I do less coding in the thing than I did maybe a year ago. Um, but, because uh, other smarter people have taken over for me. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Ann Gentle. Um, let's see, four years ago, November 2010, I had just started at Rackspace, brand new, uh, hadn't had a Mac computer in about eight years, uh, barely remembered three Linux commands. Uh, what else? I had been working as a, basically a community uh, documentation consultant, and I had just, like, I started at Rackspace, I had this keynote in Sweden for community documentation, I found out that there was this community documentation job in my backyard in Austin, Texas, and jumped at the chance. Um, I think only one other person applied. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was, you know, four years ago, fall. Um, I wasn't at the actual OzCon starting, like, kickoff. So I was even a little later than some of these old timers, right? Um, old timers. <laughs> We're all so old. That's right. Uh, hi, I'm Jay Pipes, um, Sagittarius. I like long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Monty kind of said four years ago, um, uh, Monty and I were working on the uh, Drizzle database project. Uh, we'd both come over from Sun Microsystems and got involved with um, what turned out to be OpenStack, <laughs> uh, doing sort of due diligence on um, what the next generation of Rackspace uh, Cloud would, would be. And so uh, uh, we did a bunch of due diligence on various systems at the time, and Nova had literally just been sort of thrown out into the world, and, and uh, we got notified about it and took a look at it and said, well, this, this might work, um, and it's been a long, strange journey ever since then. So. And my name is Thierry Carrez. I was uh, involved. I was in Canonical as the technical lead for Ubuntu Server when uh, when OpenStack started, and I got uh, hired by Rackspace to work on the release management side of things and try to bring some structure to the to the effort. And then I moved to the OpenStack Foundation, and I basically do the same thing I used to do, but the job changed in four years a bit. Going, apparently going from 10 to 1,000 developers brings interesting scaling challenges. Um, so we're, we all moved on, but we are still, uh, I mean, we all had a different journey, but we're still involved in OpenStack. And that's what makes those four, uh, those five people <laughs> um, a bit special because some people that were there four years ago just moved on because, you know. Um, Sure. 
<laughs> okay, Mark's talking. not here. Um, <laughs> but I met Mark Collier and Jim Curry, and they were the ones who interviewed and hired me. And they were both kind of business development people at Rackspace who had these crazy ideas. And um, if you really want a wonderful history of OpenStack, there's a Wired article that I now hand to every new racker um, and just highly recommend it for the real true story of what happened at Rackspace, what happened at NASA, how people met, and it's a wonderful story. So if you're interested in this kind of historical context, read that one. So my first question to the panel is, um, we all started this for different reasons and coming from different backgrounds, uh, but we all had a goal, um, personal goal, that we wanted to accomplish by joining that, that, that project. Um, so my first question is the most uh, controversial one. Uh, why, what did we fail to accomplish for, during those four years? What, what did we set out to do originally uh, when we joined this journey? And we are not still not there. We, we, we did other things, but we failed to accomplish those early goals. I have not made $100 million, personally. That was your original plan? Absolutely. Surely that was not your original goal. <laughs> And you must be pretty close I to the I didn't know you were going to start with the hard one. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. I've got one. So uh, the initial plan for Nova was to basically create a private cloud for NASA, um, which had both an infrastructure and a platform component to it. Um, NASA Ames, unfortunately, doesn't use that cloud anymore. So that was a failing, I feel. Um, and that was primarily because OpenStack grew so quickly that it sort of grew out of NASA too fast. And um, a lot of the experts, including myself, that were at NASA ended up leaving and going on to do other things. And so there w wasn't enough expertise there to keep going with it. Um, so there's a fail. Yeah, my, 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 the reason why I'm, I added this question to the panel is that I have an answer for that. Um, my <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, cheating, I, man. <laughs> I asked you for questions. You didn't and you did not. provide any. So um, my initial goal was to to uh, not have a future where only Amazon would provide public cloud. And um, so the, the early goal was really to build this interconnected hub of, of um, OpenStack-powered public clouds that would take over the world and, and beat Amazon as, th as their, at their own game. And I feel like we accomplished a lot more than we set out to do. But on this specific, um, uh, specific aspect, Amazon is still very much there. Uh, we don't have this interconnected hub of, of uh, small public clouds or small, smallish, bigger public clouds that were supposed to replace this, um, this thing. So to me, it's, we are not there yet. And, and I feel like we took a long detour um, to that original goal that I had. So that would be my, my fail. Um, I, I would say m my personal uh <laughs> failure, uh, well, two things. So um, I personally wanted to rid the world of, of the scourge of XML. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I, I have, We're getting I have closer, surely my failed in that. Um, we've made big, big strides towards that, and, but uh, we, it's still in there. Um, no, but uh, in, in all seriousness, I, I think we have honestly failed to focus on the API side of OpenStack. I think it, it is, um, to this day, um, a mess, the, the, the public HTTP APIs. And um, uh, three, four years ago, I was really pushing for, look, it's the API. We need to standardize the APIs, make them consistent. We can have differing implementations. We can, you know, and that was one of my personal goals, and I, I really haven't seen that through, but hopefully soon. Um, we, we can make some, some more progress there. So. We've got a new working group. We do have an API working group. That's very cool. Get involved. Um, my, uh, I, I, I think, and, and similar to all these, I, I think we've made some, some, interesting, uh, some interesting progress on the, on the general, uh, in the general direction, but um, started off, uh, you know, in the, on the infra CI side of things with the idea that um, we we do things such that that every commit into the things would be releasable, um, like that. That's sort of the that's sort of the the goal there. And in, in theory, I mean, 
we do have people running, you know, this stuff continuously delivered, but a lot of them are running it, you know, two, three, four, five weeks behind, six months behind, whatnot. Um, and that's because there's <laughs> four years behind. Um, uh, and, and that's because, that's because in, in truth, it's, it's, a, it's a bit harder than that, right? And, and um, we haven't quite uh, accomplished for, for all of the stuff that we do and for all of the sort of uh, the effort that goes into that side, it's still, um, we're, we're still not sort of hitting, hitting that um, on the, on the like, I would love to make that, I'd, like to, I'd love to make Thierry's job irrelevant, you know? Um, it would be great, you know. I'd love to make my, my job relevant, um, and and we're both still here. <laughs> so, and maybe uh, so I'm trying to think of a failing in the documentation side since I'm the docs PTL. Oh, you're um, so awesome. <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> awesome. Um, it's so interesting though with the growth. Um, we actually had a session yesterday where it's growing so much so fast. So many projects from two to now um, seventeen are in the you know integrated incubating sort of. Um, realm and yesterday we actually had a comment in one of the sessions your team is not going to write the documentation your team is going to write the docs on how to write the documentation and so i feel like there's this total inception going on where we've gotten so big that you know the experts laying around with this very specialty area of docs are just going to have to write a small shell script to replace themselves you know what there's a lot of in documentation yeah xml <laughs> Slowly changing. So my next question will be a bit more positive. Um, which of our successes were unexpected? I mean, I can, I can key it off. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, yeah, he's if not you're here, here, just feel free to come up on stage. <laughs> I think the growth was unexpected. The the how fast it grew and, and how how many people we attracted? Right, I mean, what? how many people were in Austin? T 200? No. Not no even? Less. No, no, it was... 150 uh, people I in it was Austin. Like 75. 75. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think I vaguely remember the temperature was about the number of people yeah. in <laughs> Fahrenheit. It was like 110 degrees or something in, in Austin. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that the growth has been... I mean, it's been pleasantly surprising um, how quickly things have grown. I mean, obviously, we've had challenges in keeping up with, you know, the the growth curve uh, and the popularity. Um, I I think the uh, a, an early criticism of the of the OpenStack community was that oh, it's all sort of fluff and marketing, and you know, there's no there there. Um, so uh, I, I think we're we're actually starting to catch up to the marketing hype a bit, which is um, I th I think a, s a successful sort of curve, right? I think we're we're getting to the point where um, we're matching what what we're saying we are, right? So uh, in the vein of growth. Uh, when we first started writing Nova, we would have been happy to have five users. Like we, we did not expect to ever have other people looking at that code and complaining about how bad it was. Um, and, and so for us, it was a big surprise uh, on the NASA end to have Rackspace join and then have this whole initiative sort of spring up out of what we thought was some code that we wrote over a weekend. Uh, so that was definitely a surprise in the positive side. One of the surprises that I had was the, um, the infrastructure model we built for this. Uh, the whole, um, I mean, maybe that was your plan all along, Monty, but um, I feel like we built a development model uh, instead of a cloud platform in some ways, um, and, and that people, other people adopt, I even internally uh, inside enterprises. And it wasn't like a, an expected development. We weren't set out to, uh, to you know, fix all the development models for everyone and, and Build something that would would inspire others to uh, to reuse it. We just tried to uh, iterate on well known uh, patterns, and it ended up being something that serves as a model for for uh, the rest of the open source community and inside inside companies. Yeah, I I, I would completely agree with that. Uh, and if you look at the just the sheer breadth of tooling that the infrastructure team has created over the last you know three four years with Zool and NodePool and Git Review and Gertie. And I, I mean, it's just, it is kind of astonishing um, 
how how much that team has has produced and um, cope, coped with you know the the growth in the developer community um, in, in such a short amount of time. It really is pretty that, fantastic. That's your cue, Monty. You can go. I was just gonna say, I did he Monty, reminded you're me great. That. Oh gosh! Well, I was going to say that the possibly the most unexpected thing is Gertie, uh, that that we could produce Gertie out of out of all this. For What's you Gertie? For those of you who don't know, it's a it's a it's a text based TTY interface to uh, to Garrett and and code reviews that is fantastic. Um, so never would have expected that that would have been a thing that we would have worked on or found found pleasing. Um, but things things grow and, and change, and yeah, like the uh, we we started off with with some development model stuff, and because of all of this growth, that you know, we sort of had to. Uh, I'd say possibly it's it's un, it was unexpected that that we're we were able to cope with the with the sort of explosive growth and the in as well as we have. I mean, there's still tons of warts and you know tons of ways in which we just had a session yesterday on how to how to deal with the review load and you know pro project scaling issues, but. Um, that's a that's a fascinatingly great conversation to to have to have at this point. Um, do you remember the? Um, do you remember the? I think it was the cactus. Maybe it was Diablo Summit where we were having the debate about going oh to yeah. GitHub. Oh yes, or I using Git oh yeah. as opposed to Bazaar and Launchpad. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I mean it really is weird to think that that was only two and a half. Years ago, three years yeah, ago, fun, fun memories. Yes. Yeah, that was the. That and was now, the and now we just sort of take a lot of that stuff for granted. But that was an actual conversation <laughs> that, well, like there, <laughs> that we had. So there's a. Th I was thinking about this this morning. Um, come coming over here is that we used to have a bunch of these, like the you know the the official OpenStack uh, argument of JSON versus XML. But there was there was also the eventlet twisted argument, and you know there was the there was the the Git BZR you know, kerfuffle and, and like all of these different different things that were just like diametrically opposed, like like, you know, die hard people punching each other in the face. Right. And, and I'm and I'm sure four years from now we're gonna look back and say, Do you remember like blueprints? We we had these things called blueprints. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> um uh, but, but but that said, I mean, we had like a hundred people in the room yesterday talking about the the spec process, and like really, what we're talking about is like, hey, maybe if we had like a thing where you did the first heading first, and then we we got it, we we got approved of that, and then we moved on, and like, there was nobody like standing up screaming like, we should clearly just use GitHub issues, you know, like that's um, that nobody's doing which that anymore. Somebody which somebody did, just you know, yeah, really, two and a half years ago. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Another unexpected development, I think, um, was the um, uh, the technical meritocracy that we built. Uh, I mean, it was set as more as a social experiment, and it actually lasted and created this this uh, hot market for OpenStack engineers that makes us all very well paid. Um, so that's an Wait, unexpected development. You remember we started off with me saying that I did not make my $100 million. Yeah, that was <laughs> your plan, <laughs> no, not <yes>. mine. <laughs> Well, next question or anyone? No. I don't have a good unexpected. I can't believe there's still not so many women. I guess I have to say that. Like I'm like, really? Uh, I can't. There are more, and we're well, growing we're every growing. time. So that's it's it's full of promise, full of potential. Get more women here. Yeah, <laughs> but I, like yeah, the there's four. There's if you guys haven't gotten the MetaCloud playing card deck, you definitely should get one of them because. Yeah. Our faces are in it, and that's a great narcissism boost. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not for you, but it is for me. For you. Um, uh, but but it, you look at it. There's 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 exactly four women in it, and each one of them are the queen of something, right? And and that's because we that's, are. that's that's cute. <laughs> um, but the, sadly, you know, Anne was pointing out that that's actually that's one female card off from being the appropriate. Percentage, percentage of women who of attend women attendees at OpenStack summits. At summits. And yeah. if that doesn't put in perspective for you what that percentage really is and obviously shouldn't be. It's good visual. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's I mean four four playing cards. But I never expected to travel the world <laughs> like we have and I never expected to have relationships with true collaborators in Europe, in Asia, around the world. Like that's been amazing. That's true. So next question is, which are our largest challenges ahead of us? What, what, can, what should we fix? What is left to do? I think we, we, 
we had so much marketing hype so early, right? And and then we had some explosive growth, both in the in the code success and in the in the community, that we we never really got the chance to to um, to have that sort of second version iteration thing that oftentimes you'll have early on. You'll have like the early cra crazy thing you did over the weekend, and you do it for a little while, and then you're like, okay. Let's rewrite that, and then we'll then we'll be serious, right? We're we're basically having to 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 do a five thousand person summit on on the basis of something that we 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 can't like we have to, we have to organically iterate on on this thing that we've got right now, and it's doing a great job for lots of people, right? But like we we didn't we grew so fast, we've got to we've got to we have to keep making this thing uh, work and and move forward, and I think that at the scale of humans we are and and how in use this thing already is. Everybody wants it to be so many things, um, and we can't just we can't you know we can't just take a chunk and throw it away because there's a billion people using it already. Um, and so I think that's figuring out how to how to move that forward in a in a sane way is is the is sort of the ongoing challenge, um, uh, and it's not going to get any better. Yeah, to me the, the current challenge we have is is uh, uh, around the project structure, um, and we've we've been having those discussions li lately on the on the design summit side. Um, try to not be limited by the project structure that we said uh, we be built early on. Uh, we iterated a number of times on the way the the, the various projects are structured, and we. But today we are reaching a new, a new, um, a, a new level where we need to adapt again because because the current model doesn't fit what what's required of for of by our ecosystem, and and so this this is like the next challenge for I mean the very next challenge basically we need to evolve the project structure so that it's not constraining our future growth and and doesn't pr prevent competition doesn't prevent uh, interesting projects from from being taken into account. And I think that's the the next challenge for me. I think our biggest challenge is struggling with how we define ourselves, like what actually OpenStack is over time, because the the growth has led to this the situation where we have everybody wanting to be part of the community and have this great expanding, growing group of people working on many different things, but that creates uh, confusion and a lack of focus in terms of us really defining OpenStack. And, and the reason that definition is important, which is the other piece that I think we need, the biggest challenge we have is, is interoperability. When, when we have a loose definition of OpenStack, it makes it very hard to give guarantees to the community around what is interoperable and what works together and what doesn't. And um, when you have something that's growing this quickly, it's very hard to define it and, and give it a full set of, full structure. And I think that structure is going to be a big challenge that we deal with over the next couple of years. What is OpenStack? What does it mean to be OpenStack? How do I interoperate with different OpenStacks? Like, can we really, because that's really what we need to achieve those goals that we're talking about taking over the world and being, you know, a bunch of little clouds everywhere. You can't do that without some kind of definition. I think that's like the, the really big challenge, like the elephant in the room. Long term. Yeah. But, I, you know, there's little, there's smaller challenges, how to get enough people who know Nova well enough to review it, reduce the technical debt. Um, not that that's a small challenge, but it's a piece of the puzzle. Um, I also agree with Jay that we have a big challenge where we have huge adoptions of our APIs and there's applications built everywhere specifically for OpenStack that, um, I mean, I'm running the numbers, I'm looking at the support, I'm looking for the developers that are application developers. And so there's so much, even though I led with like a contributor developer challenge, the other challenge is the application developers supporting them, giving them interoperable clouds. Um, yeah, I guess it always comes back to that large one, right? Yeah, and, and another point on that is, um, we we are too big to know everyone and assume that our culture, our common values, will will naturally spread to new the people that are joining our community. So uh, scaling that culture, uh, we have lots of unwritten rules. We have lots of principles uh, that are that we take for granted and that we expect newcomers to also adopt. And but we failed to maybe document those shared understandings. 
in a way that is consumable by new um, new community members. So scaling our community past those uh, this new Dunbar number of people we can't really connect with, and and have a success in that. Yeah, I think, and I think this has come up a few times. From uh, I think it came up in the uh, the the keynote panel um, uh, on Monday. Um, the I as far as that goes, we're also reaching out more and more into. Um, uh, not just to non-English speaking, I mean, because you know we've had you around since since day one, so we've we've always been at least slightly non-English speaking. Um, but uh, <laughs> sure, um, <laughs> uh, but but we're actually getting into into it more and more into into non non-Western cultures, right? And uh, and and if we're if we're actually going to be sort of global, uh, uh, then then. Things that we take for granted as a basis for for our culture, um, as we interact with uh, with you know the new friends uh, around the world, are, are we have to we have to encounter those. But also, it's not just about assimilation. Like I, I certainly hope we we don't like attempt to be an American style hegemony, right? Like this is this is as we as we meet new people and 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 bring them into sort of our culture, they're going to have they're going to have cultural values uh, and. And, and new experiences that are that are important for us to um, to engage with, and that's that's a that's a that's a big thing. I mean, like that that isn't been really all that successful in the history of mankind, honestly. But like, if we're if we're gonna do that, and we're not just gonna bulldoze people over, then that's an important thing to grapple with. Um, I, I would say, for me, looking into the future, um, the uh, probably the number one challenge of the OpenStack uh, community. Is actually a, a challenge personally that I I have, which is learning to say no, right? Um, I I think that especially with the with the growth and the number of vendors and the number of developers, uh, and contributors, uh, operators, deployers, uh, and, and business folks that are you know relying on on OpenStack, building businesses around OpenStack, um, you know, obviously using OpenStack in in IT infrastructure. There are just it's it's just a never-ending stream of feature requests and pressure. And, uh, say again. And constant pressure. Constant yeah. pressure. You know, to, uh, whether it's NFV or uh, you know IT uh, enterprise art, I, IT stuff, it's it is a constant stream of feature requests. And even if you had a million developers, you know, working, on it, you still can never keep up with it. And um, you know, one of the discussions that we've been having, and and certainly in the Nova uh, uh, contributor team, but also just across uh, OpenStack development, is how how do you prioritize what you work on, right? And we've <laughs> we've had a, a number of different proposals, and we've we've hashed out a bunch of ideas. But I think solving or answering that question and and getting tools that enable us to say. We're going to focus on this, you know, these few things for the next X number of months, and we're going to uh, not not do this. You know, we're we're not going to look at this. We're not going to work on this. We need to we need to learn how to say that. You know, we we need to learn how to say no gracefully and explain in you know very clear words why why we're focusing on some things and we're not going to do others. And it's a natural consequence of the meritocratic model we built where, where technical people are in charge. We don't want to say no because we want to be nice, but we... Right, uh, and, 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 and it's not just, uh, you know, the, the technical side, right? I think a, a lot of it, you know, is a product management. We, we need to take some, some best practices from product management communities and be able to uh, project our roadmap in a way that people understand and uh, and can and can deal with. Right. Yeah, one of the I mean, we've there's been a lot of talk about uh, need for for product management in the in the project, and I think actually um, w one of the th one of the things that we really need to um, uh, in engage with or, or think about there is that um, we 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 spent a lot of time uh, early on, and, and we've we've done it sort of throughout of how do we how do we allow two thousand developers to to collaborate in a in a in a leaderless model where there is not a top down command and, and control structure, right? Because that's something that normally doesn't scale to, to this size. Because we've built that, it now means that as we as we look at bringing the product managers from from the different uh, 
uh, different interests that are that are in, uh, that are that are want to be involved with this together, um, we we kind of have to, to develop a the, the same thing, except that at least in the development side, we had a whole bunch of open source history uh, in, on our on our side, and we were just taking the next step. There is, I would say, zero history of cross company product management collaboration in this particular in this particular way so like there's it's going from iterating on something to inventing right. kind of there, a new there's thing there's not a there's a there's a we long history of developers in working in the open source community together right there's not so, so much of a long history of product managers working you know cross company saying oh you know let's get together and you know uh, so so i yeah i i think we we are hitting we've hit that wall and 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 that to me is is probably the biggest challenge in the next next few years Okay, well, so we have 10 minutes left, and I want to uh, open the, the floor for questions from the audience. Um, do you have any... Question for Mark? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my question for Mark is, Mark, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> no answer? Wow. Questions, anyone? Go for it. Um, the there is Mike. There is a microphone over there in, uh, in the hall. In the room. We've got mics all over the place. That's crazy. Or just scream. It's fine. So this is not a question, just a comment on the last statement. My name is Sean, I'm from Red Hat. I'm uh, one of the product managers that actually work on OpenStack and that's what I do for a living. And you. I just want to give you an update that uh, uh, the, the, this actually is one of the themes that we saw in the community, right? This is, this is bigger than just one entity who would like to represent their set of interest in OpenStack. And we have, in the foundation, the storage at the OpenStack Foundation, we actually realized that. And this summit is the first summit when we actually had a meeting with all the influencer of OpenStack. Uh, so all the pro product managers actually met for the same time, first time here in this summit. And I believe that's a good start <laughs> uh, to get us what we need and actually start looking ahead of what we need to do at the project level, right? Uh, and, and our goal is to start putting some governments inside a project so we can scale up uh, and all that. So I, I believe that the first seeds already been laid out this summit and, and, and it's a good indication of the maturity of OpenStack and we got to this point now and we need to put some formation in that. So I, I believe we're gonna see more seeds of that uh, in the next uh, future, come on, upcoming future. That's very good to hear. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, OpenStack is uh, often compared to uh, Linux. Um, at a number of different levels. Uh, I'd like to ask about the uh, economic comparison. So if you go back when Linux was four or five years old, you could go down to you know, a computer land store and buy a box with uh, Linux in it, it would be about $80. And um, if you got tired of uh, paying $80 you, and you had enough bandwidth, you could start downloading the same distribution for free and then over time as Linux matured and the enterprises adopted adopted it, people wanted a higher level support and started paying for it. It seems to me that OpenStack has jumped to the end point where uh, you can't get an upstream, um, you can't take the upstream OpenStack unless you're incredibly skilled and, and make it work. And the uh, entry cost for somebody using it from a commercial vendor is, I don't know, I don't know what the average is. Uh, somebody quoted me yesterday, $3,500 per node per year. Those are very high prices if you're trying to convince people that uh, you know Amazon is too much money. I'm wondering what you think about the economic model of OpenStack and how that relates to the current state of the product. Who wants to take? Anyone wants to take it? Um, <coughs> I, a, as someone who's never uh, paid money for, well, any software really, um, I, I, I don't, I don't quite know the, the product side, um, probably as well as I, I should. Um, so I, I can't really speak uh, much to, to that. I, I do know that you are, you are absolutely correct that it is way too difficult to get a simple running open, well, is there a simple open stack system? I don't know. Um, but cool. you, you are absolutely correct that it, it is it is difficult to install and deploy OpenStack and, and, and get it 
running in a simple fashion. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. There's lots of different guides. We do have upstream guides, and there is a OpenStack release, uh, like an upstream release, but you're absolutely right. There's different distributions, Mirantis, RDO, Ubuntu Cloud Archive, you, uh, you know, you name it, the appliances, Nebula, Piston. So I don't know, I, I, I guess, uh, I guess my answer is I, I, I don't know whether we jumped to the end or whether the vacuum was just there from the beginning and was filled from the beginning because it's hard to, to install and configure highly distributed systems. It's just, it, it's, it's not like you're, you know, installing a, a, a Windows application, you know, on a single box or something. It's, it's just inherently difficult. I, I think so we're at actually at a point where quite early in the, in the Linux ecosystem where, where people want to build a supercomputer out of it, but it's only like four years old. And, and if you wanted to build a supercomputer with Linux by that time, you would pay that type of prices. So we still need to potentially make it easier to deploy uh, and, and consume directly from the upstream project so that like a small university can set it up without having to uh, resort to, uh, to crazy prices or a team of uh, 100 to do it. There's, a, there's another big, there's a big difference in what's happened since, you know, 93 um, uh, to, to now. Uh, one of those is that I'm much older than I was back then. Um, but, but open source in a lot of ways is won, right? It, it's, it's, it won a lot of the battles. It's, it's already, it's sort of the, def it's become the de facto, like when you, when you do something that isn't open source, you sort of have to justify it now, right? And, and people are, I'm going to look at you funny and make you maybe basically, call you an idiot um, uh, and and that isn't ridiculous at this point like it, it would have been ridiculous 20 years ago but that means the the unintended consequence I think of the resounding success of, of open source overall is that the the most of the people working on open source projects now are not doing it in their spare time they're not doing it on the weekends they're not they're 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 working for companies and they're working for companies who are involved in those in those projects, which means that I think that the economics of, of open source in general have have changed. Like we don't have things. Docker is Docker is a company. It's not a it's not a project. Ansible is a company. You know, like all of these things are 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 being driven by that. All of them from a, from a very early age. And so, so with something like OpenStack, we had companies get involved immediately because it was in fact the only way to to get developers on it. Um, and, and that that is a very interesting, and I, I don't. I think as a as a yeah, I, I think yeah. the open source as hobbyist um, stuff that ship has sailed a long time ago. So long um, ago, um, yeah. So the, the, I think the the economies of open source in general, not OpenStack specifically. I think the economy of uh, of open source changed quite some time ago to be driven um, in large part by uh, corporate contributors. Um, and, I, and I, when I say corporate contributors, I just mean people that are employed to work on open source, not necessarily, you know, that, that all they work on is, is corporate or vendor specific stuff. I'm just saying uh, developers who, who are employed to work on open source. Cool. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question. Good morning. Thank you. Um, if you could change one thing since you started from the four years ago, what would it be? In OpenStack, I mean, not in the world, but in OpenStack. <laughs> XML. I wouldn't have picked Python. Th there's, there's a scaling. I feel like some of the scaling problems we deal with would be much easier in a, in a statically typed language. Um, and in, in a language that is built more for large-scale teams, Python is a great language for small hack projects, quick iteration, like some of the stuff that was good early in the project, but at the current scale, I feel like it, it gets in our way sometimes. I, I'd, I'd agree with that, and I was one of the early proponents, you know, of, I mean, I obviously didn't make the decision to write Nova in Python, but, you know, I've been a, I've been a, a you know, Python person for, for years and years, and that was actually one of, one of the reasons that, that I thought this was a good idea. I was like, woohoo, yay, <laughs> Python, that's great. Um, and and yeah, it's 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 a it's fantastic in so many ways, and also, it it just I mean we're 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 quite a large we 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 run it we get at odds with some of the other folks in the Python community sometimes. She's like, oh, why are you doing this? You you should do this other thing, and we're like, yeah, no, it doesn't 
that doesn't work at our scale. Um, and, and that's itself been some interesting challenges, and we've been working with people to, to try and address some of that, but there's some fundamental things. Yeah, I, I'd totally rewrite it in C++, um, but. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> no. I'm fine with Python. It's like the only <laughs> language I can code in, so it's fine. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to. Th it's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think about it. Um, Why would I change? I, you know, I the other thing, and I, this is this is crazy because this actually would make everything harder on us today if we did this right now because we're actually trying to do the opposite thing. But in some ways, our our decision to to make this uh, or to keep it, it started off as two projects and two source code repositories. Our our decision that that was to remain a, a good idea. Um, rather than to make it a, a a project with with a whole bunch of of endpoints and features inside of it, and to solve the problem of how do you manage the the internals of that, I I think that we started down the road of of keeping that separateness, and and that's that's led us into some interesting places that I think uh, feed into some of the product management uh, woes and some of the other scaling problems that we have. Kind of come back to that. So like we just shove it all back into one. Thing that would you know, uh, but uh, we're yeah, we're out of time. Maybe a last comment. Oh, I I was just gonna say um, I don't know if Soren Hansen's here, but he probably would appreciate this. But um, I I I I think our um, heavy reliance on uh, centralized uh, database systems within a number of the components is um, a design choice that. Um, Looking back, if if we could now undo a lot a lot of stuff around that, um, we're going to be struggling to un uncentralize a lot of things in the next uh, in the next few years. And you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. It would been it would have been nice to to uh, design things a, a little differently on on the data layer. So uh, one femto question with one femto answer. Um, a lot of pressure. Uh, <laughs> Thanks again. I think uh, it's pretty clear that OpenStack's a great example of how uh, to kind of come together as a community and develop code in a way that also fosters a healthy competition. Uh, but there seems to be some market pressure starting to come around the perimeter of open source hype initiatives. Uh, do you see any sort of clouds on the horizon in terms of like influence from other public cloud providers or other entities, or is that something that's been on your radar as of yet? I think we've been pretty resistant to uh, like external pressure. Originally, it was like, ah, oh, Microsoft will kill you, or, or you know, this company enters the OpenStack space to hurt you, and it never happened. And it's true that there, there are like new initiatives that's that are coming that are like copying parts of OpenStack, not not the whole model. Um, I don't. I don't see where you, I mean, I don't really care about threats, to I be honest. I mean, there's all, uh, the biggest threats I see are just in terms of hype, like Docker, Kubernetes or two that are that have gotten a huge amount of attention. Um, it, it reminds me of the early days of OpenStack before there was a lot of meat to it, and it was just a lot of, oh, I've got to use this because it's the new hot thing. And that, that I think, can distract people from getting real work done sometimes because you, you always want to be on the cutting edge and doing, using the cool new thing and, and sacrificing something that maybe works already, but for something that might work you know, a few years down the line. Yeah, I would, I would say it generally like my personal philosophy is to you know, not worry too much about, you know, ec you know, let other people uh, compete and, and do their own thing and focus as much as you can on making your own, your own stuff as good as it can be. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a constant rat race, you know, where you're constantly trying to keep up with X, Y, Z. So, well, thanks everyone for uh, keeping up with us. Thank and you.